Kenpo is a Chinese term. And uh, earlier when the Okinawans studied with the Chinese, they always called it Kenpo, you know, as if it was the mother art. The thing that's special about this, this is here, yeah, the first Americanized version that's been introduced to the American public. Uh, heretofore, it's been Okinawan systems, Japanese systems, Chinese systems. But as a street fighter in Honolulu, I realized that some of the things that they're trying to uh, promote in terms of actual working movements really was not very practical. So I had to kind of revise, create, add to the system so that it was geared for the type of fighting we found in our environment. I'm Ed Parker, often called the father of American karate, sometimes called the godfather of American karate. However, I did not start martial arts here in the United States. The members of the Tong imported Chinese coolies who had come here to work on the railroads in the early 1840s. They formed syndicates, Tongs, and they used to be in war with each other, and as a result, they started to bring in martial art masters of course, after the Tong Wars had subsided, many of these uh, masters had gone back to China, but a few of them remained here, so as a result, they had these private classes. I was the first to start this art on a commercial endeavor in around 1954. Because of the philosophy that's occurring on the streets today, which is, it's not always right, what was left that counts. Karate is becoming a very interesting and uh, sought-after martial art experience. Number one, to learn how to fight. However, fighting is not a big thing in terms of our training. We try to teach, especially the children, our students, into learning how to fight so that fighting does not become an important thing in their life. The actual history is lost in the antiquity of time, although the Chinese are given credit for it. They fashioned a lot of the weapons after observing the fowls and the reptiles and beasts of the land. So they fashioned the tiger claw, the, the eagle's beak. Then the Okinawans picked the art up and uh, during the uh, uh, era back in about 1704, their weapons were confiscated, so they developed the art which we now have and call karate. I was kind of a naughty kid, you know, in class. And the teacher told me, he said, Ed Parker will never be a success in life. I took it to heart, and I only wish I could find that one particular teacher now and thank him for those kind words, because that was the driving force that told me I'd never be the monkey with the cup, but the organ grinder. I studied, uh, I studied Kempo, but um, the man I studied with mm -hmm. was an extremely interesting guy because although he had studied from his father and picked up knowledge and swapped it with other people, he came to the realization that much of what was taught in the Orient 
though it was very inclusive, wasn't yet re rearranged to suit modern day context. So he found that there's a lot of changes needed in order to make it work mm -hmm. in our present day environment. And it was because of him that I began to think this way from my early years. Now, when I first started here in the United States and had a lot of traditionalists come in, I was a rebel as far as they were concerned. But you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the guy that comes out in the end that really counts. And, and being a street fighter myself, uh, I, I went along with this trend of thought. I feel that most of your Japanese and Oka Okinawan systems are more linear or angular in their motions. Mm -hmm. The Chinese, on the other hand, are very circular in their circular motions. Circular motions, correct. But you have to have a combination of both. Like you have to have good feet, you have right. to have good hands. Like you use linear moves, you've got to learn, uh, learn to use circular moves and combine them. Because I feel that when you just strictly use linear moves, it's just like learning to print the alphabet. After you learn to print, what do you do? You learn how to write in script. Simplest way to print. And that's the script has a composition of both linear and circular movements. And that's why it keeps flowing, like your stuff. I mean, your right. stuff is the script writing of the arts, not print writing, you see. Now I say system because Kempo is just that. It's a system and from this system we teach individual styles. We're sort of like tailors who try to fit the art to suit the individual rather than the reverse. What makes us unique? We're practical. We're not classical. We teach how to combat things that occur on today's street. We teach linear as well as circular movements. Movements that will be helpful and practical, not against one individual, but several individuals as well. And that is the essence of Kempo. Complete motion, complete movements, all concepts involved to cope with the fighting found on our streets today. Now that you've had some insights in terms of Kempo, perhaps you're wondering whether you could do it also. Yes, you can. This art is not restricted any age, nor is it restricted to sex. Each and every one of you can learn the martial arts. And with today's environment, it's a necessary endeavor to study the martial arts. No matter what style or system, you could also perform these movements if you but try.